Several months ago, at the beginning of this year, or maybe at the very end of, of last year, I had an experience. As far as I can remember, the, the day was as normal as it could be. It's just a regular day. I laid down in my bed, intending to go to sleep. And assuming that I was going to wake up the next morning, just like I always did. What I'm getting ready to say, the experience that happened to me, it's hard to recount. But I believe the Lord gave this to me to tell others about it. When I came to, I found myself suspended in midair. I was in an upright position, basically, kind of a standing position position. I was no longer laying down. And I could not move. Um, I, I could just move my head, but I couldn't move my arms. They were down to my side and I couldn't move my feet. I could just, just barely pick up my feet just a little bit. And my initial thought was that this was a sleep paralysis. I've suffered from sleep paralysis for years. And, um, and normally my, my reaction to sleep paralysis is to just pray because otherwise it's a very terrifying experience, at least for me. But I, I began to pray. And, um, and I got done praying and nothing happened. I remember actually being surprised nothing happened. And then I knew, I knew that I knew, and I don't know how, but I just knew that God did not hear my prayer not that he ignored it not that it didn't concern him but that he just did not hear my prayer and I immediately began to, to take Notice of my surroundings. And the first thing that I did notice was the darkness. Darkness isn't even correct, I don't think. It, it was more like a blackness. And it was almost oppressive it was thick and I looked down at my feet and somewhere I, I knew it had to be close but, but I couldn't determine exactly how close but there was fire I could just see it I remember thinking it was odd because this fire didn't actually put out light. It didn't cast uh, a light like a, like a fireplace or a bonfire. Uh, it, it, it was just this real dull orange glow. And, 
And I knew that the fire had to be close because it was hot. It, it was so hot. And at this time, as far as I can determine, I was only there for maybe a minute or so. And, and I was already, I was drenched in sweat. And um, I just, I remember thinking, man, it's, it's so hot. And and so I knew that the fire had to be close. I could feel the heat coming up. But but there was no light being cast by it. And as I surveyed my surroundings, and of course it takes longer to tell it than it took for me to actually just look and see. But I, I very quickly looked and immediately the passage in in Matthew chapter 25 came to my mind about where Jesus was giving the parable of the unprofitable servant and and he tells the unprofitable servant that he's going to be cast into outer darkness, and there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I immediately knew, when this scripture came to me, I immediately knew that that's where I was. That this was outer darkness. I didn't struggle with it. I didn't try to plead my case. Because I knew immediately... That I was guilty. I, I, I was guilty. This is what I, I deserved. And once this realization came to me, whatever had me suspended in midair dropped me, took me down what felt like several feet, and then pulled me back up. I remember the heat got real intense as I as I dropped down and came back up. And uh I, I remember the pain in, in my legs, especially my feet and my legs. And I remember thinking God, I, I spent one day too long. One day too long just doing my own thing. I spent one day too long without giving you everything. God, I spent one day too long playing chicken with you. But I began to pray again. And, and it's odd, I, I still remember praying and, and even speaking in tongues. And for a brief moment, I had some semblance of hope. But as soon as the prayer was done, that same feeling came back and I just knew. I just knew that I knew that God still hadn't heard me. And so I began to yell out, Jesus. And then something really bizarre happened and I, I can't accurately describe it. But I began to have memories of hell. It, it, it wasn't like it was my imagination and I was imagining what was going to happen to me. It, it wasn't like some kind of vision that I was having where this is what was in store for me, but I, it was memories like I was actually 
reliving what had happened. And I remember being in hell. And I remember the demons there. Massive demons. They'd claw me and they'd just rip the flesh off my body and they would grab hold of my arm. And they would rip it out of its socket. And just dismember me. And and the arm would would come back. I remember the heat. I remember getting thrown against walls and, and just feeling like feeling like I was going to die but not actually dying. And I remember the pain. I remember yelling, screaming. And I came back to where I was just suspended in air and I, I remember just um, just weeping and, and screaming. If somebody had seen me in that state, they'd They'd seen a madman. They'd seen someone who had gone insane. I I just and and so again, that scripture where Jesus said there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and it came it came alive to me because that's that's exactly what I was doing. I I, I was. Just screaming. And I remember yelling out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I never did hear any kind of laughing. I never heard anything mocking me. But whatever had me suspended, every time I would yell out Jesus, it would drop me. And it would bring me back up and it would drop me. And and I just got the sense that I was being mocked. Like this thing was letting me know that there was no help for me. And I don't know how many times I went down and came back up and went down and came back up, but, but I remember it, it every time the heat got more intense. And I remember trying to pick my feet up just just inches that I could and 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 screaming out and just not wanting, just trying to buy just just a few more seconds before I went down into this fire because I knew it was gonna hurt. I remember screaming, Oh God, it's gonna hurt, God, it's gonna hurt, God, it's gonna be so painful. And then I, I came back up. And I stopped. And I didn't know what, but I knew that something was different. And I don't know how long I was suspended there. And and as far as I can remember, the only sound that I heard during this whole experience was at the very end and as I was suspended there and, and I heard this this rumbling and then I heard a crashing. And on the far end of the room that I was in, and, and I was in this massive circular room, at, at least as far as I could tell, just based on, on this orange 
fire that I could just barely make out. It, it seemed to be a circle. But on the far end of this room, something crashed through the ceiling. And there was this column of light. And there was a figure in, in the middle of it. And, and I remember looking and thinking that it was odd because the darkness, it, it wasn't like you, you're in a dark room and you turn on a flashlight and the darkness is, is immediately dispersed. It was, it was more like the light was, was shoving the darkness back. And, and I remember getting ripped away from whatever had me. And, and as I was traveling across this room at, at an incredible speed, this figure in, in this column of light, it shot up through the roof, through the hole that it created. And I, I traveled across the room and I got into this beam of light. And I remember looking down and, and I started traveling up again at, at, at an incredible rate of speed. And, and I remember watching as the fire dissipated and then there was darkness. And I remember looking up and there was still darkness. And, and I came up and, and slowly there was light. And, and I could tell that I was traveling at at an insane speed because everything was like blurring almost. It, it was bizarre. And, and suddenly there was this bright light. And when I came to myself, I was sitting upright in my bed. And I, I remember noticing within seconds that I was burning up, that I was absolutely drenched in sweat. And the first thing that I could think of was, I'm so hot, I, I've, I've got to get in the shower to cool myself down. And, and I remember wiggling my way out of bed. I, I had almost no strength, and, and my feet hit the floor, and I almost fell, but, and, and so I just had to to sort of stumble my way to the bathroom. I, I had to hold on to furniture and, and against the wall, just kind of lean until I got to my shower. And, and I turned the water on and I looked down and I was shocked by what I seen because my, my legs from about midway on my thigh down they were this bright bright red like I'd been sunburned like I'd been out in the sun for the entire day and I, I remember thinking that that they were going to blister and and I put my hand down and, and felt and it, it was so hot I looked at my feet, and, and my feet were even worse. The, and they hurt. They hurt so bad. They were, they were just burning. And if I had any kind of illusions that I had just experienced some kind of dream, they went away at that moment. Whatever had happened to me, I knew that it was real at that point. And I, I just, I remember crawling into the shower. I couldn't even stand just letting the water cool me down. But I said earlier that when I realized where I was, that I knew that I was guilty and that I deserved to be there. And so what was my sin? What, what was my sin? What was the, the great thing that I'd done 
that placed me in this place called hell? Did I cheat on my wife? No. Had I told some big lie? No. Had I gone out and killed somebody? No. What, what was it? What was it then? It was the sin of being lukewarm. Because the Lord began to deal with me. Because I, I wondered, God, what do you want me to take out of this? Uh, other than it just being a warning, because I believe that there was more to it than that. And, and so I began to study and I began to pray. And, and I knew from the beginning that I'd been lukewarm, but... For years of my life, for years of my life, I came to church. I, I came to the altar. I knelt down. I, I said the sinner's prayer. I would come to church and I would lift up my hands. I would sing praises. I would even shout. I witnessed to people at my job. I prayed for the sick. And God even moved and, and I seen people made well. I began preaching. And I really, I really convinced myself that that would be enough. I really convinced myself that that, that was going to be enough. That, that I would be able to call upon all of that. When, when I stood before God, I'd be able to say, Lord, I, I, I prayed that, that sinner's prayer. Lord, I, I worshipped You as best as I could. And, and, and Lord, I even preached Your Word. But I'm reminded where Jesus said that many would come and say, Lord, we've, we've done these things in Your name. We've, we've cast out devils. We've healed the sick. We've, we've done all this in Your name. But the Lord would look at them and say, Depart. I never knew You. And see, just as, just as I'd said, I'd done all of these things, but yet I was still at the same time I professed to be a lukewarm Christian. I, I'd said it out loud in conversations. I, I, I'm lukewarm. And see, God began to reveal to me that there's no such thing as a lukewarm Christian. You, you you can't be lukewarm and be a Christian. And and I had known in my soul, in my spirit, see that it never sat well with me. It, it never felt quite right. But I began to justify it. And I, I began honestly just to ignore it. I began to suppress it and push it away. Push that feeling away. And I, and I justified it by all the things that I was doing. but it never felt right. And so if we go to Revelations chapter 3 and start with verse 14, this is what Jesus says about being lukewarm. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. 
So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Jesus is describing this lukewarm church as being wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Nowhere in Scripture will you find Christians described that way. And so, God began to reveal to me that what I had actually done was I had said, God, I've pursued You and I've got enough of You. And so I'm, I'm going to do my own thing now. I, I've got enough of You, God, and, and what I really want now, I, I'm kind of missing the world. I'm, I'm kind of missing doing my own thing. And that's what I'm going to pursue for a little while. And, and I believe that God is disgusted by that. Because what, what it says, it says that he, he will spew us out of his mouth if we're lukewarm. And, and literally, what the Bible is saying is that, is that when we act this way, when, when we tell God, man, I've got enough of you, Lord, and, and so just, just give, me, give me something else. Let me pursue something else. What, what God tells us will happen, what this Word tells us will happen, it literally makes God gag. So much that He wants to vomit us out of His mouth. And, and you can even look and see in, in the book of Jeremiah where the Hebrew people they've begun to, to turn from God. Sure, they, they still go through the motions of worshiping this God. But they began to pursue other things as well. Other idols, other gods besides Jehovah. Besides the real, one, true God. And, and you can look at God's response and God even tells the heavens, He commands the heavens to be appalled at what is happening. And, and see, I can say all of this, and, and I, can, I can say that there are many, many, many Christians, Christians, People that are sitting in the churches and they're expecting one day when they die, they're, they're expecting that they're going to stand before God and God's going to say, well done. But instead, God's going to say, no, you're going to be cast into outer darkness. And I believe it's going to come as, as a shock, as a surprise to people when it happens. Because... I was convinced that my works would be enough. Even though I had always preached against works. Even though I sat under a pastor that, that preached against works. I still, in my mind, convinced myself that all the things that I did we're going to be enough that I could, I could say, God, I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. But it didn't happen. 
It didn't happen. And, and my concern is, is there's many in the church that's going to experience that. And, and guys, we don't have a promise for tomorrow. I, I don't have a promise that I'm even going to be able to finish this message. And, and so, I implore you, I beg you, I, I plead with you. If you think, even just, just a little bit, that you might be, that you might possibly, maybe, lukewarm. I beg you, find a place to pray. Maybe you were like me and didn't even, you don't know even really what it means to be on fire. You, you've been lukewarm maybe the whole time that that you've been a Christian. Guys, I, I didn't really know what it meant to be on fire for God. But I knew that something had to change. And that was the answer. That was the answer. I couldn't be the same old Isaiah. I, I couldn't be that same person and, and guys, I've, I've, I've had people come to me and, and, and say, well, everybody grows at their own rate. And, and, and people change in their own time. And, and you've just got to give people time to grow up in the Lord. And, and to, a, to a degree that that is correct, there is a growing process when you come to know Christ. But guys, 